So what am I looking at when I refer to math? I did not take calculus. I will say that right off the top, but I've become fascinated with how calculus and math relates to markets, which has brought me down to this real simple strategy that I've put in place that I follow on a very regimented way. There are a couple of different ways I look at markets and how I determine what I'm going to do when it comes to investing in them or trading in them. And here, are the, here they are. Number one, I look at the big picture. What is happening on a global scale? What is happening here in the United States? And what I look at is where is the how is the money flowing? Meaning, when I, as a consumer, have money, I go out and buy stuff. What am I buying? Am I buying small ticket items or am I buying bigger ticket items like TVs and cars and houses? And then I, I look at that and I track what that looks like. Now, back in 2019, we were you know, a little bit higher interest rates than where we are now. Um, housing market wasn't just killing it. But all of a sudden, COVID came about, interest went, rates or Fed funds rates went to zero, money became available and cheap, and oh, by the way, you got a raise from the government between four and $6,000 a year on an annual basis. We push more money in your pocket. Well, if there's more money in my pocket, well, I've got to go spend it, right? And that's what we have done since basically June of 2020. We have gone out and we've spent more money. We have bought more homes. Housing market has taken up. Lumber costs have gone up because we want more homes and we have to build more homes. So those have gone through the roof. My home has basically tripled in value in a matter of 24 months. Complete ridiculousness, but it has. That being said, eventually, as Carrie once said to me, this will all end at some point. So housing, now we're starting to see mortgage applications are starting to slow. Why is that? Well, maybe we're not getting four to six thousand dollars a year in additional income on top of our existing income from the government. Maybe that could have an effect on where housing prices are going today. So I look at that. I look at retail. I look at CPI number. I look at all the different flows of in and out. I look at shipping container movements through between China and us. I look at disease, CD, you know, the CDC website. What is happening there? How many people are getting sick? Are there beds in hospitals? I'm looking at all this, so I'm looking at the big picture. I then take that down to an index. So let's say the NASDAQ, the uh, S&P 500, the Dow, um, the DAX, the, you know, uh, China, Singapore exchange, the Hong Kong exchange, Europe's exchange. And I look at them and I go, what is number one, their intermediate trend? Where are they when you look at three months plus? Okay. When I say three months, I mean 90 plus days out. Okay. And if they are above their 90 day trend, the trend is solid. It's positive. Things are going higher. It will eventually at times sell off, pull back to that 90 day trend. But if it bounces off that and moves higher, then I know I'm in a upward trending environment. I couple that on, I put that on say the indexes. I put that on, uh, you know, growth numbers on housing or used car sales or new car sales or TV sales. I harp on TV because I just bought a new TV. First one in what, 15 years? Ooh, wow, completely different than what I had before. But the prices were higher than what I was expecting because they have been popular in the last 24 months or so. So I look at the 90 day period of time. What does that look like? If my position, say, let's say Facebook, since that's been a topic of conversation between my Carrie and I, Facebook has broken its 90 day trend. Whoops. Uh-oh. Investigate, take a look. What's going on there? Well, 
fundamentally, they are losing money. They're slowing down. They're not producing their growth. So that to me says, until Facebook breaks above that 90 day trend, I don't want anything to do with it. Maybe a trade. And a trade is three weeks or less. If a stock is trading above its three week trend, maybe it's starting to trend back towards its 90 day uh, intermediate trend. And if it is, maybe it's something to take a look at, keep an eye on. But I'm, while I'm looking at all this, I'm looking at how fast is, are these movements changing or the rate of change of these things. I'm wanting to know, is there a big abnormal movement in the rate of change between the individual position, individual days of the trading days through weeks, months, and years. If there is, it's giving me a directional idea of where things may be headed. So I look at those two things on a intermediate and uh, short-term trading uh, environment. So more than 90 days, is it above its 90 day trend? And is it below its three week uh, trending or above it? gives me a directional idea where things are going. Number two, I watch volatility, the VIX, the VXN, which is the NASDAQ 100 volatility index. These are things I'm looking at. And I've done in a previous video, the great place to invest in those areas, the chop bucket where you get chewed up because the market keeps going like this and volatility goes like this, and then where market crashes happen. And that's above that 40 mark on the NASDAQ, uh, or excuse me, on the VIX. When we see bo booms like that over 40, then I know we're in a bust type of environment. Things are drastically going to go down. I couple that with the rate of change. And all of a sudden, I have a picture of where we are headed and where I should position my portfolio. And number three, I have picked up on this here recently on a short-term intermediate, short-term trading environment. So less than three weeks. Heck, I'm less than 24 hours is what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the implied volatility number. And I couple that with my slow stochastic uh, indicator. And I can sit there and watch as volatility creeps up and the slow stochastic creeps down. I know where to position myself and vice versa. These are the indicators that I'm really basing my decisions on. If it breaks the intermediate trend, I know that that position or that index or that stock or that bond or whatever it is, is headed downward. And as I see lower lows and lower highs, I know the trend is down. So go look at your favorite stock. Go look at your favorite index and look at a 90 day period of time. I use the EMA 90 day period. I then couple that with a 90 day 250 period and that gives me another layer of deviation that this thing can go down. If I break through the 90, I know I don't wanna be on this and I know, oh, but I'm just buying it at a lower rate. I'm gonna hold it forever. Yeah, well, I don't believe in that. I believe in long-term investing but I also believe that you have to have a process to protect yourself from these drawdowns. If you hadn't sold out of the tech stocks, the Microsofts, the Apples, the Facebooks, the Amazons in the last, say, 90 days or 90 days ago, or trimmed your position down and took some of that profit so that you can enjoy some wins, you have been losing money. You have been losing money because you've seen your positions decline. By reducing your positions in those, uh, those uh, reducing your size in those, those positions, it gives you basically ammo to go back in and buy it when you see a turn, when you see volatility come down, when you see uh, the, uh, in my case, the slow stochastic on a weekly basis start to move up. This is indicators to me that, hey, maybe we're getting back to where we need to be. I would rather lose out on a 10% from the bottom to where it gets back to its intermediate trend. I'd rather lose that than risk that money in that my idea or my position all of a sudden retraces another 20% halfway to my intermediate trend. It's my risk management process.
So I hope that gives you some ideas on how to basically build some framework from a macro standpoint, a long-term standpoint. Look at where money is going. Look at liquidity. You look back on yesterday, uh, was it, uh, February 22nd, the last couple moments of the day, you saw a rush into the market, a lot of buying, all of a sudden pulled the indexes off their lows, but today they're selling off again. Well, understand that the people who moved that market in that way was not you and I, the individual retailer, it's the institution. They're covering their short positions. And if they're covering their short positions, that means they're in cash. And if there is nothing to support underneath this market or that stock or that bond or whatever you own, if there is not anything to support it, then where is that bid going to go? That bid ask and that bid are going to start widening. And that's when crashes happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you hit the like button and please hit the subscribe and please tell Carrie that man, Trent, he's rocking it. Put it in the comments, ask your questions, comments. I'll try to respond to them and always, always, always do your best. Do what you can do about the things you can control. Forget the rest and always number three, live loud. Peace.